Now we're going to talk about transfer to adult court, uh, uh, transferring a juvenile to an adult court. Transfer or waiver to adult court is the process through which a juvenile court relinquishes jurisdiction over a juvenile offender, and the case is processed in adult court. A juvenile who has been waived to adult court is treated like an adult, and in many cases is subject to the same punishments as an adult. Waiver to adult court is also called certification, transfer, remand, or binding over. Uh, the use of waiver to adult court is a relatively rare event. Less than 1% of all cases formally processed in juvenile court are waived to adult court for prosecution. Therefore, less than 10 out of every 1,000 cases processed in juvenile court are waived to adult court. All states allow certain juvenile offenders to be waived to adult court. There are three types, and they differ primarily by who makes the decision to try a juvenile in adult court. Uh, purposes, the purpose of waiver to adult court, or why juveniles are tried as adults. Well, those who are charged with horrible crimes, heinous crimes, violent offenses that frequently generate media and community pressure. They do it to re uh, remove chronic offenders who have exhausted the resources and the patience of the juvenile justice system. To impose longer potential sentences than those that are available within the juvenile justice system. All states allow for it. They, all states allow juveniles to be tried as adults in one of three ways. Concurrent jurisdiction, which is also called prosecutorial waiver. This is where the prosecution has the direction, uh, discretion of filing charges for certain offenses. They get to make the decision whether they're going to file the charges in either juvenile court or in criminal court. So all of the powers with the DA. Generally, the age uh, cutoff is 14. The juvenile has to be 14 or older in order to be subject to waiver in a, uh, adult court. Florida, it can be, the charge can be a misdemeanor or a Florida, but most states say it has to be a felony, uh, misdemeanor or felony in Florida. So do you see a problem with this concurrent jurisdiction? What's the job of the prosecutor? The prosecutor's job is to seek and obtain convictions, and this person has the sole discretion to decide whether they are going to seek their justice in juvenile court or an adult court, and a DA is an elected official. If we're talking about a case with uh, media and community pressure, then he's not looking at what's in the best interest of the juvenile, for sure, right? So there's some problems uh, with that, and there's no power from the court. The court can't come in and trumpet. Statutory exclusion is another. Uh, it's also called legislative waiver. And this accounts for the largest number of juveniles tried as adults. This type of waiver brings certain juvenile offenders into the criminal justice system at the point of arrest, and it bypasses the ju uh, juvenile justice system altogether. So by statute, it says which offenses are going to go to adult court. So murder, aggravated robbery, if that's what the juvenile's charged with, According to the law, that has to be done in adult court. And it also can say which ones are excluded. Traffic tickets, right? Removes the discretion. In this instance, it removes the discretion from both the prosecutor and the court. Juvenile waiver, or sorry, just judicial waiver is, and this is a, a common method. Uh, what it is is the uh, waiver to adult court. It also has been around, one of the longest in, in history. This was originally the only means of waiver, of waiving a juvenile to adult court. What happens is the prosecutor files a petition with the juvenile court and requesting that the court waive its original jurisdiction over the offender and send him or her to the adult court. The court holds a hearing and in its discretion makes the decision of whether or not to uh, send the juvenile to adult court. Now, 
New York system uh, waiver process has gone through a complete reform. Actually, the whole juvenile uh, justice and um, uh, component has gone through quite a reform, but we're talking about waivers, so I'm going to change that right here because um, I don't like the suggestion that it makes regarding New York in the book. So New York system, uh, the waiver process has been reformed in 2017, and it's kind of a combination of the last two um, waiver process, the statutory and the judicial that is, the age is a component, okay? All cases go to juvenile court if they're between the ages of 13 and 15 and 16 and their 19th birthday. They go to something called youth court. It's a different branch. Between the ages of 16 and 19th birthday, they have youth court. It's still a branch of the family court. Juvenile court is also a branch of the family court. And we're talking between the ages of 13 and 15. The district attorney must motion the court within a certain time frame that's specified by the legislators. And it depends on the, on the crime. And the presumption is, the law says, the presumption is it stays in the family court system, whether that's in juvenile court, depending on the age, or in the youth court. And the DA has to overcome that presumption by showing extraordinary circumstances. So, and the statute itself, statutory exclusion, also excludes certain offenses, uh, such as DWI. Those cases have to be in adult court if the juvenile is between the ages of 16 and 18. Um, with regards to waiver, it's a rare, like, like I said earlier, it's a rare event. As far as I know, there's only been one in Clinton County in the last couple of years, and the uh, court kept it was the youth court. The juvenile was 16, and the DA has had made a waiver. It was a murder case. DA made a waiver, seeking that it be transferred to adult court, and the court said no. Let's talk about due process in the transfer proceedings. Uh, there are standards uh, for transfer to adult court that are set by state statute. Some allow for use to be transferred to adult court if they are between the ages of 14 and 17. Other states restrict waiver proceedings to mature juveniles and specify particular offenses that are eligible for waiver. A few states allow transfer of any child regardless of age, and those are generally for the serious offenses like murder. Since the mid-60s, the United States Supreme Court and other courts have attempted to ensure fairness in the waiver process, i.e. Due, due process. Think due process is fairness. Uh, in a very important case, uh, case as it relates to the uh, judicial waiver process, Kent versus the United States, at the age of 16, Morris Kent was accused of committing several burglaries, robbery, sexual assault. Uh, since Kent was already on probation, the juvenile court judge presiding over the case waived uh, Kent's, ca Kent's case and Kent to adult court without a hearing and without a thorough investigation of the allegations that warranted the waiver. Uh, Kent was found guilty and he was sentenced to 30 to 90 years in prison. The Supreme Court overturned the conviction of Kent and ruled that a juvenile has the following rights if waived to an adult court. So the states must provide a legitimate transfer hearing so evidence can be presented. Sufficient notice must be given to the child's family and the child's defense attorney. The child has the right to have an attorney at that point the right to access any reports and records used by the court in deciding the waiver. The child and the attorney have the right to. And there must be a statement of the reason for the court order regarding the transfer. So these were the rights, fairness rights, due process rights that the court put in place relative to the judicial waiver process. Doesn't have anything to do with the other two, the, the statutory 
and the prosecutor. But if the judge has the discretion, this is what has to happen in court before the case can be transferred. Another important due process case, Breed versus Jones. In this case, a juvenile, Gary Breed, age 17, was found to be uh, delinquent in a juvenile proceeding. The act constituted a robbery. And then, after he was found delinquent in a juvenile proceeding, and then the court transferred the case to criminal court for a criminal proceeding on the same incident. And he was found guilty and was sentenced to, I don't know how much prison, but he was sentenced to prison. The case went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, uh, you can't do that. That's called double jeopardy. Uh, so the court said, prohibited from trying a child in an adult court when there has been a prior adjudication in a juvenile proceeding. That a juvenile may be transferred to adult court if and only if probable cause exists at a transfer hearing and, and no adjudication. This is prior to adjudication. And lastly, the court says, since the same evidence is often used in both the transfer hearing and then any subsequent trial, a different judge is required uh, for the trial. You have to have two different judges. Why do you think that is? Prevents bias. Bias when one when the one judge has already heard the the evidence prior to the actual trial where there's a jury. So should youths be transferred to adult court? There's a lot of pros and cons. Most critics say that doing so clashes with rehabilitative the rehabilitative idea of the juvenile justice system because that's what it's supposed to be about. Other cons is you know. Juveniles, particularly young ones, may not be competent to be tried as adults. Waiver can also create long-term harm. Those who are given a waiver are often stigmatized by a conviction in a criminal court. Waivers don't always support the goal of increased public protection because juveniles are a fraction of those incarcerated in prison. Uh, the actual treatment of juveniles in adult court is similar to what they would have received in juven, uh, juvenile court a lot of times. A lot of times it takes a long time to get to adult court, so a waiver can add an undue burden on youthful offenders, so youth, uh, juveniles. Uh, cases, like I said, take a long time in a adult court, and hence juvenile spends more time detained, waiting for the disposition of the case. Uh, that even though waiver was reserved for the most dangerous violent offenders, there have been a lot who've been transferred uh, to adult court who were repeat nonviolent offenders. Transfers are not always fair and equitable. There are racial disparities that exist in the waiver process, with minorities cases being the ones that are mostly waived to adult court and at a higher rate. Some pro uh, pros to the adult court, transferring to the adult court, those who are in favor, coincides with the get tough on crime policy. But we saw a video, a couple videos, uh, with regards to that whole tough on crime and the effect on juveniles. The waiver is superior to alternative methods for handling the most serious juvenile offenders, uh, minimal the minimum penalty for criminal charge in adult court is greater than what is available in juvenile court, but also what might be perceived as serious in a juvenile court may not be thought of as in the same way in adult court. And adult court, there's a jury. The juvenile gets to avail him or herself to a jury. There's no jury in juvenile court, and we're going to talk about that when we get to the actual trial. The waivers continue uh, to uh, the the waiver continue to be used can be attributed to the concerns about the most serious and violent youthful offenders. And despite the use of it in recent years, there was a, a survey that was done, a survey of citizens, their attitudes towards waiver 
to adult court found that 87% of respondents, those who responded, felt that a juvenile charged with a serious violent offense should be tried as an adult, while 69% felt the same way for a juvenile charged with selling illegal drugs. Also, 62% of those responded felt that a juvenile charged with a serious property crime should be waived to adult court for prosecution. So the attitude is still there, especially relative to serious, uh, violent, youthful offenders. So that is the discussion on waiving or transferring a juvenile's case to an adult court. The next topic is going to be talking about the juvenile trial court and then the appeal process.